Hello and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today's educational video will be on Indian Monsoon and its dynamics. Uh, so let us get started and understand how the Indian Monsoon sets in and what are the dynamics that uh, govern the monsoon system. Uh, so before I get into any technical aspect, this is just one slide which talks about uh, the non-technical aspect and defines the monsoon in a very layman language. Uh, it is nothing but the moist winds that uh, originate from the Indian Ocean and they travel all the way across the Indian subcontinent, thereby bringing cloudy skies, uh, mostly along the southwest coast, but sometimes also uh, many a times in the interior as well, and sometimes on the east coast. Uh, and these, uh, the skyline is very thick with these nimbostratus clouds. Okay, so this is what a layman term of uh, definition of monsoon uh, would be. And if you look at the monsoon, and here I'm going to only going to talk about the southwest monsoon. Uh, so the southwest monsoon is characterized uh, by the two branches that spread over the Indian subcontinent and these branches are basically the monsoon currents and that is uh, that is uh, initiated by the Arabian Sea branch and the Bay of Bengal branch. We will talk about these in the in detail in the next technical uh, in a mo much more technical manner in the next few minutes. Uh, so let us get into the basics of the monsoon. So here I'm just going to talk about the factors that govern the Indian monsoon. One, the first one is the differential heating and cooling of land and ocean. This is not very uh, difficult to envisage and this is uh, the most trivial aspect. We all know that uh, land uh, heats and cools faster than the ocean. Uh, so when it, is heated, when it is heated up, then the winds are blowing from ocean to land and that's how you uh, get these uh, wind patterns. Uh, so the differential heating is only one of the many important factors but it's uh, this is always present and uh, uh, that's why we are not going to dwell too much upon it. There are other important factors like the Tibetan plateau heating uh, that causes the strong vertical currents and uh, high pressure at uh, very high level, upper level, which is 9 km above sea level. Uh, and this 9 km corresponds to 250 HPA wind. So the Tibetan plateau heating is very important because that uh, causes a very, very high vertical updraft and leads to a upper level divergence or the high pressure at a higher level. Then the ITCZ, which is the Intertropical Convergence Zone Movement, that is also important. Then there is something known as Tropical Easter Leachet, which is a um, uh, kind of a manifestation of points 2 and 3, which is Tibetan Plateau and ITCZ movement that gives rise to this Tropical Easter Leachet. Uh, then there is a presence of a Mascaran High in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, and that also leads to a cold pool near Somalia coast, thereby bringing the Somalian Jet, which is also known as the Low Level Western Leachet. We will talk about all of these except the point number one. We will cover the rest in detail in the next few uh, minutes. And then we have something known as the Indian, uh, East Indian Ocean Coastal Current or the e, uh, EICC. This is also quite important. It forms in the Bay of Bengal. I'm going to talk about that as well. And finally, the Indian Ocean Dipole and the El Nino Dynamics, which are the synoptic scale dynamics. Most of these are uh, the Tibetan Plateau Heating, ITCZ, Tropical Easterly Jet, Mascaran High, and EICC are all kind of local to Indian Ocean. This is basically the synoptic scale phenomenon which is Indian Ocean Dipole and El Nino. So let us now break each of them down. Um, before we break each of them down, let us just look at how the general atmospheric circulation is set up. This is very important to understand monsoon. So this is the most uh, basic state where I'm assuming that everything starts at the equator which is zero degrees. So what happens at the equator is, since the equator is hotter, the warm air rises near the equator and it sinks near the mid latitude. So what you have is you have something known as a Hadley cell which is very uh, trivial uh, and has been seen, seen in satellite images. Uh, so this Hadley cell is a very uh, um, uh, distinct cell which is seen in satellite images. So you have this, so Hadley cell is nothing but the warm air rises near the equator and then it gets, there is an ascending cell of Hadley cell which is the rising um, uh, wind or the air and then there is a descending uh, pattern which is the cooling air. So it goes up and then comes back down together by creating a cell. There are other cells we are not going to talk about that because we are mostly interested in tropics and subtropics. So I'm just going to talk about Hadley cell. So this Hadley cell as it moves up because of Coriolis there is a right hand movement. Uh, so it so at mid latitude or the subtropic uh, near the subtropics you have something known as a subtropical westerly. So where the winds are moving from west to east. And then as this is, as the uh, air is descending down, again due to Coriolis, which uh, in the northern hemisphere turns things to the right, 
you have again easterlies correct so that's how you have the westerly winds at higher latitudes and easterly winds at lower latitudes so this is how this is the basic thing that i want to get started with okay now this is the like i said this is the basic state where because of the convergence of the winds in, from the northern hemisphere and winds from the southern hemisphere they meet at one point and form something known as the intertropical convergence zone itcz uh, in this figure we have shown a very ideal case where the itcz is at equator which is zero degrees but this is not uh, the ideal case in reality there is a lot of perturbation so the itcz keeps moving up and down okay within a band that's how the monsoon circulation system is set up okay here and here, here we are showing a very ideal picture uh, just to explain how the easterly and westerly winds are formed and how this itcz is formed all right so let's go to the next topic which is a tropical easterly jet this we have already covered but i'm going to cover it in a slightly uh, um, detailed fashion so what happens is there is convection right which is the ascending branch of hadley cell which i talked about okay ascending branch of the hadley cell moves up and then uh, as it moves up because of coriolis there is a deflection okay to, towards the right and that creates these westerly which is a subtropical westerly and as this um, uh, ascending cell uh, is descending down because there is a convey there is a circulation cell so whatever goes up has to come down then only the mass conservation continuity will happen uh, otherwise we are not uh, conserving the mass or we are not um, um, uh, abiding by the laws of nature which is continuity because something moves up then some 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 place else air should come and uh, fill that gap right so as it moves up there is going to be a descent as it is descending again due to coriolis you have this right hand movement which leads to formation of this high level tropical easterly jet okay so whatever happens at the top is going to move from east to west that is the tropical easterly jets uh, action okay so this is what i say call the tropical easterly jet so it moves from east to west and any cloud movement which are above some height let's say between 600 uh, hpa to 250 hpa they will be pushed from east to west okay the low level winds will be pushed pushed from uh, west to east during the monsoon time okay that is very important to understand and because of this uh, tibetan plateau heating what happens is uh, this itcz moves up because now the ascending branch is no longer near the equator it has moved towards the tibetan plateau at 23 degree north that's why the ascending branch of hadley cell is now near 23 degree north and that's why your itcz has completely moved upwards and this is exactly what is needed to start the monsoon circulation currents okay and this happens during june may or may end or june first week is when the itcz moves all the way up till here okay this is very very important this is this itcz movement is directly tied to the tibetan plateau heating okay all right so so far so good now let's move uh, here what here what what i have shown here is the itcz movement just to uh, this is a movie taken from ncar's uh, ncar's website so you can clearly see that the i will speed up the movie you can see that itcz around jan is uh, near the, below the equator because the equator is somewhere here somewhere here the most cloudiness is here and as we go in time you can see that the itcz will now move and you can see clearly that the itcz is moving and it has now covered the indian subcontinent i'm going to june july it has completely covered the indian subcontinent subcontinent and this is where the tibetan plateau heating is happening and because of that itcz has moved here uh, and so lower level winds will be from west to east but the higher level winds will be the tropical easterly jet that i talked before that will be east to west okay so that's why you have this strong shear where lower level winds which are from 0 to 700 hpa are moving from west to east higher level winds upper level winds which are from 700 to 250 are moving from east uh, east to west so that's the high shear and that high shear doesn't allow any cyclone to form that's the reason why during monsoon no cyclone forms okay so if i if i just play it back and forth you can clearly see the itcz movement see so here the itcz is down and here it moves up and then it again moves down see so that's how the itcz movement happens so it is not stationary it is moving up and down okay that's what i wanted to show all right <clears throat> so now let's get to mascarin high and somali jet how does this somali jet happen so what is the source of this low level easterly winds see you most of so during normal days the low, low level winds are also east to west okay only during monsoon they reverse and become west to east so what is the mechanism for that the mechanism is basically nothing but the mascarin high pressure high pressure zone in the mascarin islands near the mascarin islands okay so that's the reason so let us just uh, look at this so there is this mascarin high uh, which 
usually forms in the southern hemisphere below the equator and what this high does is this is the high pressure which is sitting uh, in the atmosphere which is sitting above the Mascarene Islands uh, in this uh, South uh, Indian Ocean. So because of this high pressure winds cannot move into this high pressure we already we always know that winds move from high pressure to low pressure. So this high pressure pushes the winds and it pushes the winds in such a way that they move towards the Somali island uh, here and then after that because the winds are moving uh, from uh, south to north what happens is there is something known as segment transport which pushes the water away from the coast and because of that there is upwelling and that upwelling brings cool water to the surface because of that cool water there is another high pressure which is created here near Somali but that high pressure is much lower than the masculine high pressure okay so relatively this is a low pressure this is high pressure but uh, relative to between relative to Somali and India this is a high pressure and this is a low pressure okay because of the Tibetan heating uh, Tibetan uh, plateau heating so what happens is the winds are uh, automatically pushed from this mass high zone to this low pressure zone relative low pressure zone and then because of the cooling which is happening here because of the upwelling that I talked about the winds are again going to pushed be pushed towards the Indian subcontinent okay so now you can compare these pressures 1036 1014 uh, sorry and uh, 1001 obviously this is highest relatively high very low so the winds will automatically travel from here to Indian subcontinent and that's how the westerly wind or the low level westerly jet or Somali jet sets up and this low level westerly jet is uh, the depth is usually from 0 to 3 kilometers or 0 to 700 HPA is the depth of this uh, Somali jet very very crucial for our Indian monsoon okay so so far what we have covered is we have three things which are crucial Tibetan plateau heating anti season movement and masculine high hand Somali jet formation okay so uh, I will stop this video here and I will continue in part two because there is a limit on the minutes uh, the, the, the number of uh, I mean uh, the video uh, the size okay and by size I mean I can only upload a 15 minute video so let this be a part one I will go to part two and I will explain the other things.